In the, in the second part of this lecture, we discuss the uh, magnetic force between two loops or between two current carrying elements. They do not have really to be loops. Uh, so what's gonna what's happening here? We have um, a loop current. Okay, it's carrying a current. We'll call this current I1, and another loop of current carrying a current called I2. Okay, and the each because each loop creates its own magnetic field, and this magnetic field. Uh, Will, will interact with the current of the other loop, creating a force. So these two loops really do affect one another. Uh, so we have seen now three types of magnetic forces. The first one is a magnetic force affecting a charge, which was given by Lorentz equation or Lorentz law. The second one is a magnetic force affecting a wire, uh, an ele a differential element of current wire in a magnetic field. And the third one here is the, is the force between two loops. Uh, and how you calculate this is very simple. What you'll have to do, uh, you have first to um, to uh, take maybe in the second loop, you have to try to take a small element and try to find the magnetic field resulting from this element at at the other at as one of at one of the elements of the other loop. So I will call this other element here. Uh, say call this one DL one, and I will call this one here DL two. Okay, and then. We try to integrate to get the total magnetic field from the second loop at this element. And then we can try to f find the force on this element. And then we integrate over the second, or, the, or, or this is one here is actually the first loop. We integrate over the first loop to get the total force of this loop. So now we have to actually two integrals. We have to have two integrals, two line integrals. The first one trying to get the total magnetic, uh, the, the, if we can get a differential force affecting uh, one element in the first wire due to another element from the second wire. And then we can try to find the total force affecting this element on the first wire due to all elements of the second wire. So this will involve carrying a line integral. And then to get the total force on the first wire, what we'll have to do, we have to integrate over the first wire. So end up with double summation. So now let's go over this step by step. First, the magnetic field resulting from the second wire on the first wire. Okay, so try to find the magnetic field resulting from the second loop on the first loop. This here is simply by its law, but I include, of course, I added mu note here because we are talking about the mag magnetic flux density vector. And uh, remember, B is mu, B is related to H uh, by mu. So here, with this is a small element in the second wire is dl cross a a a to one a to one is the vector pointing from this element to the other element. We are calculating the field l in the first wire. So this unit vector here is a to one, and the r to one is this length is the length of the vector point if from here to here. This is the expression for the byte savart law. Now we know then we we can tell what is the magnetic field at this element. We can tell what is the magnetic field at this element here. So what we will do uh, once you know the magnetic field, then we can know what is the force affecting this differential element of the first loop due to this to the magnetic field of this differential element of the second loop. It is simply application of uh, Ampere's motor equation. This is I D L. This is the current element of the first loop, and this is a magnetic field resulting from the second loop at that current, at that differential current element of the first loop. So notice here they have dd. Why do you have dd? Because you are calculating the differential, the differ uh, a, a, a differential force, but this differential force is not resulting from the whole second loop, but rather from a differential element of the second loop. This is why they have dd. Um, now, in order to get the force affecting that small differential element of the first wire, we get the total force coming resulting from that from the second loop affecting that, that differential element. So we do here an integral over the second loop of whole of this term. This will give us the force affecting that tiny element or that differential element of the first loop due to the magnetic field of the whole second loop. Okay, this part is a little bit tricky. Uh, so what we'll do here, we take uh, the constants out. I1 can be taken out, I2 can be taken out, and so on. So we get this exp exp expression. So this is not really the total force affecting 
the first loop. This is a force only affecting one differential element of the first loop. So all these distances are measured from all elements of the second loop to that, to that differential element of the first loop. And again, A to 1 here is a variable. It changes from one point to another, but they are all pointing from, from every element in the second loop to that differential element of the first loop. Of course, this expression is very easy to calculate numerically. But because I can tell what's A to 1 for every differential element, I can tell what's DL, I can tell what is the distance, I can, I can determine what is DL1, which is a constant here in this integral. Uh, but uh, to, do it, to do it numerically, it can be done easily, in, but, uh, but uh, analytically, it's a little bit hard to do. Now, in order to get the total force affecting the, the, the first wire, or the first loop, we have to sum all all the all the forces affecting every differential element of the first wire. Then you have to integrate this term one more time over the first wire. So we have to have a double integral. So the total force affecting the first wire is given by this expression. Uh, you have to integrate over the first loop and the second loop dl1 cross dl2 cross a to 1 over r to 1 squared. Of course, I could move dl1 out, move it to the other, to the to the c1 integral because it's not a function really of c2. And I, I can simply get this expression here. Uh, and as I said, the, carrying out this expression numerically is not that difficult because this is a number. Uh, a to 1 is a unit vector, is a number. dl2 is a differential element. And we can divide. We can divide each one of these wires. Um, we can divide it into small elements, and then we can determine the direction of each one of these elements. So we can get. We can have it now as a summation. This will be uh, dl21. This is uh, dl22, and so on. We can have a summation over all these elements, and we can get the expression. Now it can be shown if you follow exactly the same steps that the force affecting the second second loop or second wire due to the field of the first wire is given by this expression, which is exactly that, the first expression, but after we reverse the order of 1 and 2. So now the magnetic field of the first loop is affecting every element of the second loop, and we are trying to get the force. And it can be shown that uh, F2 <clears throat> is equal to negative of F1. Uh, so the, this can be shown here for this expression. So this expression is very important uh, to calculate the force between arbitrary shaped loops, or even does have to be arbitrary shaped loops, arbitrary shaped wires, um, by carrying out this uh, this integration, this double integration here. So to summarize this part, if you have if you are given any two arbitrary loops like the ones shown here, uh, and you want to calculate the force between them, what you'll have to do. You have to go to the first loop and then you divide it into small elements, okay? And uh, you have to, and each one of them will have, of course, its index. So I'll call the index here i. You go to this loop and you divide it into small elements, and I'll call the index here j. And then you have to do a double summation over all i over all j. As we agreed, you have to carry out d l i. Uh, cross uh, DLJ cross AIJ divided by RIJ squared. And you have, of course, a constant outside which is related to the currents, uh, mu naught I1, I2 over 4 pi. So this can be done numerically in a very easy way. Analytically, it's a little bit difficult unless the geometry uh, helps you in carrying out these integrals. Let's have an example here on this case. We want to know what is the magnitude of the current uh, flowing in two long barrel wires that are 10 centimeters apart, center to center. So the normal distance between them is 10 centimeters. If the force between them is equal to 10 to the minus 3 newton per meter. And notice this force per unit length. Because you assume they are two long wires, you want to know what is the force affecting one meter of any one of these two wires and here we you were not given the direction of the wire because uh, direction of force because we are asking only about the magnitude so whether it's positive or negative it does not really matter and it's assumed here that both wires have the same magnitude uh, here in this case so we have two barrel wires they have certain force between them and we would like to know what is the current going through them if the current is the same in both wires Mag same magnitude 
So we start by drawing a simple diagram for this problem. Again, we have the first wire. I assumed it in the z direction. Uh, this actually, let's call this one I1. This I1 here and this I2, they are both flowing in the z direction. I, I made this assumption. It does have to be that way. They could be fl flowing in opposite directions. Um, and I assume that the direction coming out from the page is X and uh, the direction pointing to the right is Y. Now, take a look at the magnetic field resulting on the second wire due to the first wire. We know from, uh, from our, the Biot-Savart law and our study of long wires that the magnetic field will be coming out from the page here. So it's pointing outwards, so it's pointing in the X direction. While the magnetic field on the first wire resulting from the second wire will be going into the beach. So it's pointing here in the negative x direction. This is very important for you to determine the direction of the force. So what I'm going to be doing here, I'm not going to be using double integral one. I will use directly the magnetic field expression I have for an, a long wire, for an infinite wire. We know that if you have an infinite wire, then the magnetic uh, flux density vector is given by mu i over 2 by rho in the phi direction. And what we'll have to do now, we have to determine what is the phi direction for each one of them. Now, for the first wire, at this point, on the second wire, you will see that the magnetic field at this point is pointing out from the beach. Then it is in the x direction. So at this point, A phi is actually equal to AX. Okay, so we can simply go back to this expression. Both rho equal to the separation between them, it's 0.1 meter and phi, A phi is equal to AX. Then the magnetic field at any point along the second wire is given by B1 equal to mu naught I. I, hear, I remove the I1 here. This is the magnetic field of the first wire. But because the two currents are the same, I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I, then I wrote it as mu naught I over 2 by multiplied by 0.1 AX. If you divide, uh, this is uh, this will give you 0.2. 1 over 0.2 will give you 5. So this becomes 5 mu naught i over by ax. Now, I decided to use Ampere's motor equation. Ampere's motor equation is telling us that the, 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 this second wire will be affected by a magnetic force because it is in the magnetic field of the first wire. And the expression for this magnetic force for a small differential element of the second wire is equal to I2 dL2 cross B1. Remember that dL2, the current, the current in the second wire is flowing in the z direction. Then dL2 is equal to dz az. And B1, we already determined B1 at the second wire, it's pointing out from the page. It is in the x direction. Then we are ready to substitute. And remember that I2 is equal to I1 is equal to I. We make all these substitutions and then we use the expression for the force that we have. So if you put all this together, this is the expression that we have for the force affecting a differential element of the second wire. It's equal to the current of that wire multiplied by dL in the direction of that wire, which is dz, az, cross B1, the magnetic field of the first wire resulting on the second wire, the magnetic field of the first wire at the second wire. It's 5i mu naught by over ax. az cross ax will give us ey, and this ey is very interesting because this, this will tell us that the two wires are trying to attract. The, second, the first wire is trying to push the second wire in its direction. Uh, so this is 5i I squared. Now, we, of course, i of the first wire is equal to i of the second wire. Then you get i squared. az cross ax will give us a y. Um, uh, we have here, if you simplify, 5i I squared mu naught dz over by a y. This is just the magnetic force affecting differential element of length dz of the second wire. Because you can see this is not a function of z, then we can integrate over dz from 0 up to the length. Uh, and here, if we take it to be L, then you get the total force affecting a, a length of L of the second wire is 5 i squared mu naught L over pi. Remember that this is not a function of z, so this y is simply multiplied by L. But here we were given the force per unit meter. The, then L is equal to 1 meter, so I will put here the force to be equal to the given 10 to the minus 3 newton per meter. And this will be 5 I squared mu naught I L over by when L is both equal to 1. 
Now this is one equation where you have only one unknown, which is I squared. You can solve for I squared to determine the current flowing in both wires. If you simplify, you will see that the final result will give you that I squared is equal to 10 to the power 4 divided by 20. So this will give you here 500, and then I is equal to square root of 500, 22.36 amperes. And remember, if you assume that the two currents were flowing opposite direction, the, the force the force, the, the force would have been uh, trying to push them away from one another. Now it's trying to attract them. 